कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की In the news tonight, dedicated warehouses to store police exhibits. Police to have independent internal affairs unit. And each road fatality costs around one hundred and forty thousand dollars. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nan. Dedicated warehouses will be set up to store police exhibits and stop evidence from going missing. Acting Police Commissioner Rusyate Tundravu says there are limitations in buildings used as police stations and a long-term solution is required. There are also discussions on how evidence can be destroyed legally after approvals from the courts. Police stations around Fiji no longer have the capacity to safely store evidence. All our police stations have been built in colonial times. It does not meet the current, meet, uh, current demand that is there now. As a long-term solution, Tundravu wants specialized facilities where all exhibits will be locked away. I have discussed with the minister in terms of warehouses uh, in the divisions where we can get all our exhibits and can be stored there. Because the police station, so to speak, is really, we don't have much room for them now. Defense Minister Inia Siruidatu confirms talks are underway to legally destroy exhibits, which will also remove temptation from influencing police officers. Because I'm concerned about the health of the police officers and of course uh, uh, making sure that they are not even vulnerable because of the presence of this, uh, because most of these uh, exhibits uh, of course uh, have uh, monetary values as well. For now, police are tightening up on record keeping, daily inspections of exhibits, strengthening internal processes and investigators keeping an eye on exhibits before court dates. Meanwhile, the Fiji police force is working towards setting up an independent internal affairs unit. Acting Commissioner of Police Rusiate Tundrabu says the force needs to have a neutral affair, internal affairs unit that will better investigate police officers who break the law. Lena Reese reports. All officers who break the law will now be investigated by the Internal Affairs Unit. Before, all police officers that um, breach crimes decree, they are handled by our CID. What, our, what we are doing now, all of them will be investigated by our Internal Affairs. A new Assistant Commissioner has been appointed to lead an independent team mandated to investigate and prosecute their own. There is um, consultation going on with, with our Internal Affairs. Office of the DPP, the acting chief, just, we are seeking expert advice uh, from these two offices uh, because uh, the Attorney General has already advised me in regards to this. We need to have a neutral internal affairs unit. Minister for National Policing, Inia Seriratu, has reiterated that there will be no exemptions for those officers who are found breaking the law. We are concerned. Police Commissioner is concerned. We don't condone that and we will also take the necessary actions uh, to ensure that we get rid of these elements that are in the Fiji police force. Uh, we, we have um, standards uh, and we have expectations uh, for those that wear the uniform. The acting police commissioner also highlights that investigators are now undergoing courses as they will be tasked to look after the internal affairs unit. Lena Reese, FBC News. Close to $900,000 has been paid out for deaths and serious injuries directly occurring as a result of rental car accidents in the last three years. Accident Compensation Commission of Fiji Chief Executive Parvez Akbar says most of those who died in these accidents rather, were passengers. Pranita Prakash has the details. Road accidents are becoming costly. Every death on the road costs the Fijian economy about approximately $140,000. When you take the chain uh, of uh, getting the red light services, the blue light services out to the, the scene, uh, the manpower costs, uh, all of the costs of, of the operation of getting vehicles and tow vehicles, medical assistance, ambulance, uh, the loss of working output. The highest Compensation that ACCF has paid to date for an injury has been to a lady who was a passenger in a rental car. We paid her $132,000 and she is bedridden and will remain bedridden for the rest of her life. The ACCF chief executive says the road fatality statistics is disgraceful. When you look at other statistics 
And when you look at circumstances like uh, flying internationally or domestically, or even COVID-19 for that matter, right now in Fiji, you have a higher chance of dying on the road. Last year alone, 33,848 traffic infringement notices were issued to rental cars. In the last five years, 748 rental vehicles were involved in road accidents that claimed the lives of 13 people. The authorities have once again called on the drivers to be careful on the roads. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. The Health Ministry has partnered with the World Health Organization to make healthcare facilities climate resilient. Our guidelines for climate resilient and environmentally sustainable facilities in Fiji project was launched today aimed at minimizing damage to health infrastructure during natural disasters. Jeshula reports. Recent severe tropical cyclone have left a huge impact on health facilities. From here then we'll be able to see how vulnerable is health facilities in in Fiji to climate change or climate change shock. Small island development states are vulnerable and their facilities are vulnerable. They experience situation due to uh, rising sea level, drinking water is a challenge because they may no longer be potable because of saltwater intrusion. Dr. Wanganambete says the effects from natural disasters are not limited. That not only the facilities are affected, but also the pathology of what we face and climate sensitive diseases continues to be a challenge not only in Fiji but in many parts of the world. The project aims to minimize negative impacts on the environment and restore opportunities to maintain the health care system for the generations to come. Jeshu Lal, FBC News. Up ahead, key positions need to be filled and then our landowners hold first ever AGM. Radio Fiji 2, Desh Ki Dharka. Welcome back. Defence Minister Inia Seruiratu has suggested that some urgency be placed on making substantive appointments to key positions in the disciplined forces. The terms of the military commander, the police commissioner and the corrections commissioner are coming to an end shortly. Seruiratu says these appointments are vital, but some names which are being suggested publicly are speculation at this stage. Acting Police Commissioner Rusyate Tundravu has confirmed applying for the post. Corrections Commissioner Francis Keane has also had his term extended temporarily. Outgoing Military Commander Rear Admiral William Poto has had his appointment extended for three months but has indicated he does not intend to stay on for another term. It's important that these positions be filled. They are important uh, for our country and of course for the organizations as well. Uh, I'm hopeful that a due process will take place uh, uh, and of course we best uh, get the, uh, the best uh, candidates uh, to fill this post and of course uh, have it expedited too. Uh, there are names being circulated uh, but let the due process take its place uh, before it uh, goes to His Excellency the President. Public consultations have begun on a draft police bill to provide additional enforcement powers to the police force. Minister for Defence Inia Seruiratu points out that the current Police Act dates back to 1965 and has become archaic. Seruiratu says police need to be able to respond to new and emerging challenges such as COVID-19, transnational crime and terrorism. The minister adds the archaic Police Act places limitations on the work of police. As our leading law enforcement agency, the Fiji Police Force, needs an enabling foundation that not only assists them in the work that they are continually mandated to do, but will greatly enhance our national efforts to effectively respond to the rapidly evolving, evolving criminal landscape. Once we have things finalized and passed in Parliament, we have in place what we will do within so that our police officers are aware of the changes, uh, the uh, new police act will be coming into force and uh, uh, the, what they need to do. There's a lot of things that is embedded in it that needs a lot of changes uh, to meet the current and the future of policy. 
The landowning unit of Ndenarao Island, the Yavusa Tolu, today held its first ever annual general meeting since leasing the island 45 years ago. Members from Yavusa Tolu, which include Navotulevu, Sila and Nambati, used the meeting as an opportunity to clarify issues and present ideas. Details with Philippe Naikaso. This AGM will be the first of many as the Yavusa Tolu wants transparency and accountability for its members. It's a very historic event for Yavusa Tolu, the landowning unit of uh, Denarao. Uh, it has been 45 years that we have been in the world that since, since uh, uh, Denarao opened its uh, first hotel, the region of Fiji. Uh, we got a lot of... Uh, monetary rewards that came into our system. Unfortunately, there was lack of uh, accountability and transparency. The members also spoke about lease monies during the meeting. The 30% that was initially given to the Turanga Tauke, Turanga Nimatangali, Turanga Niyabusa in the initial government uh, be directed to go for trust. The feedback regarding the first ever AGM by the Avusa Tolu have been well received by members as they hope the AGM will be called again next year. I think it's also the first time to see the, the land owning unit uh, sitting in this uh, kind of uh, facilities and also to go through this uh, uh, kind of forum, especially the annual general meeting. Eh? More than 200 members are present at the meeting at the Sofitel Fiji Resort. Philippe Naikasso, FBC News. Fiji's first ever satellite community Wi-Fi has been launched in Nakavika village in Namosi, pioneering the innovation of broadband services. These villages in the interior of Namosi will now be able to connect to the outside world easily. Apanisa Wangai Randovu reports the other villages will have similar services soon. The installment of a satellite community Wi-Fi will ensure equal connectivity, breaking barriers of locality. Now with the setup that we have here in, in this village, uh, communities, everyone can access uh, the internet through the Wi-Fi, as well as the school that is here can access the internet through the Wi-Fi, and all running through this disk that is, uh, that is uh, in, in my background. Namosi Provincial Administrator Lysenia Tui says they've waited too long for this service. District reps have been trying to voice their concern about the connectivity issues that we're facing within the province of Namosi, especially the 40 kinners that are located in the upper Namosi region. The head teacher of Nakavika Primary School says traveling to Suva on Namosi Secondary School to access internet and update school information will be a thing of the past. The past few weeks where we had to travel to Namosi Secondary School or right to Suva because of the transport problem we have, the bus only leaves in the morning and comes back in the afternoon. So if we are going down to Suva, that means we are going to miss one whole day class. Prasad says they have received requests from other communities for installation of the satellite community Wi-Fi. This is not just the first for Fiji, but also for the region. FBC News. And Whitney is here now with business. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight. First ever family market day targets youth. And Golden Age Home receive boost. Stay with us. Bula. Bula FM, number two and seri. The Fijian Broadcasting Corporation's Today FM will be having its first family market day at Thurston Garden in Suva on Saturday. Today FM's program's director, Mario Fasala, says this is a new concept aimed at educating the younger generation on marketing, budgets, branding and microfinance. Kelly Vadala reports. 30% of the vendors at the Today FM Thurston family market day will be youngsters. We also want to... Uh, ensure that the young people know about budgeting they also know about financing and this is an opportunity for them to step into the uh, big boy shoes so to speak and help them uh, you know probably craft them and move them into the whole business attitude and to be business minded altogether 
Vasala says they will also begin a seedlings and planting drive. The organizers will gather around 200 seedlings and when they do finally get their quota, they'll move it out to those communities that are in need to help them with their, you know, their little farms, their community farms. This is something that we're aiming towards food security. The event will also include food stalls, live music from Knox and Ben Masi Rewa, a children's activity tent and a learning tent. So people that are, you know, younger generation that have lost their jobs because of the COVID-19 pandemic. And there's a lot of vendors that are looking for places to sell. So this one will be a little bit different. It's more aimed at families, youth groups. The Today FM Thurston Family Market Day, which is organised by Knox Entertainment, starts at 9am. Kelly Vadala, FBC News. Post Fiji Limited will be digitising its money transfer services after scraping Vodafone's m -Pesa from its 58 outlets. Chief Executive Aniruda Bensod says they've been providing m -Pesa services since 2013 and it has affected their revenue. Bensod says their assessment has shown that Post Fiji receives very little commission by providing this service. Bensod says most of the commissions earned are from the money order business due to its volume. But I wanted here the Vodafone people to understand that we have been so graciously providing the support for such a long period of time, not getting much benefit to the post PG. But when we struggle, it is a time for us to protect and sustain our own business. There are several discussions with the post PG over the last few months. And as of the 28th of Feb, they have decided not to offer embassy services from all their branches. And this is uh, the reason that is that is explained to us is uh, competing with their own team of business. Sharon from HFC Bank joins us now with the latest from the money market. Hello there. In the latest news, Australia's gross domestic product improved 3.1% over the December quarter, shooting way beyond expectation of only 2.5% rise. This was the first time in over 60 years since levels of more than 3% were recorded in consecutive months. However, their GDP was still down 1.1% on the year, reflecting the deep damage caused during the pandemic lockdown. The market greeted the data with poise, given the Reserve Bank of Australia had recommitted to keeping its interest rates at historic lows yesterday. The Kiwi also got a boost of its own from the latest auction of dairy, the country's biggest exports, which saw prices soar 15%. Prices for whole milk powder jumped 21 per cent to the highest in seven years, promising a windfall for farmers. Meanwhile, in the U.S., the Federal Reserve officials are facing a potential bout of inflation this spring in an economy turbocharged by vaccines and government spending. Nevertheless, the Fed held on to its easy money plans, hoping to restore displaced Americans back to work. And that's all from your HFC Bank for now. Thank you. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. Our dollar was on the rise against major international currencies today, gaining on the Chinese one, US greenback, PNG Kina, Euro and the Japanese yen. However, as usual, when it rises against the greenback, the Sangamoli loses ground against the currencies of our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars. Commodities prices were rising. Oil prices rose a dollar, closing at $60 per barrel. Gold rose to close at $1,732 per ounce. And silver was up a few cents to close at 26.82 an ounce. The Golden Age Home in Lotoka will now be able to access various services outside of the area after receiving a new 35-seater bus worth of over $200,000. The new special bus will be given by the Japanese government. Social Welfare Minister Mariseni Vonuanga says the timely assistance will benefit around 47 residents as the retrofitted bus is conducive to their circumstances. I know that the relationship between the government of Japan and the Golden Age home of Lotoka is a long-standing one. And this is just another step in that direction. Your efforts, your generosity in ensuring that the least of us are not left behind in our national development. And that's it from Business Tonight. We now join Jamie with the latest in sports. Thank you and good evening ahead in sports. BGFA excited about Women's Super League. And Karawa Levu learning from the best. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm 
Nini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Well, football fans eagerly await the commencement of the National League. Teams already feeling the pressure with big matches lined up for this weekend. One of which is the Suva Rewa match at the NZ Stadium. Tali Materakula with this report. The 2020 National League number one and two are aware of the physicality they bring to the ground. And just to prepare well and uh, come game time and uh, we'll see what we'll uh, deliver. Rewa is uh, my first team, so I'm starting with a new season with Suva and I'm getting more exposure with the new coach. Both teams want to start the season with a win. I'm ready for the clash with uh, Rewa next week. I'm uh, ready for the good season with the Suva side and start to a good season with a win. We hope uh, to come on uh, Sunday and uh, give Suva a uh, tough match. While Suva and Rewa clash in round one, Lotoka will unleash its new stars this weekend. Our new coach and uh, new place, we have been uh, training very well, uh, good uh, team uh, bonding with them. Suva and Rewa met twice in the National League last season, and on both occasions the match ended in a draw. Who's more hungry to claim the three points? We'll find out on Sunday at 3 p.m. at the ANZ Stadium. FBC Sports. Hype is definitely building towards this weekend's matches, more so with a big announcement by the Fiji Football Association this evening. Venina Rakautonga is at the event in Laudala Bay and joins us live now. Venina, what can you tell us? Thanks, Jamie. Fiji Football has announced its new sponsors for the National Premier League. And now there has been speculations that Digicel Fiji had wanted to hop on board for the sponsorship. And tonight this has been confirmed. The telecommunications company are now official sponsors of the National Premier League. The sponsorship package is worth $2.85 million and this will run for three years. Digicel Fiji uh, has also a naming rights to the this Premier League tournament which will now be called the Digicel Premier League. Um, the next big thing to come out of the sponsorship is that Digicel is allowing each district to have their own sponsorship tag displayed uh, at the back of their jerseys with the Digicel logo in the front. Now you can expect exciting uh, football which kickstarts this weekend at uh, Singatoka's Lawanga Park, Lambasa Subriel Park and Lotoka's Churchill Park. Jamie. Thank you, Venina. Still with football, there are high hopes for the Women's Super League that kicks off this weekend. The first of its kind football competition is set to elevate the development of the sport and the quality of women's football in the country. The league will also be a pathway to selecting players for the FIFA Women's World Cup in 2023, which Fiji has a good chance of qualifying for. Venina Rakautonga reports. Fiji football head coach Marika Rondu says as teams will be traveling week in, week out, players' physical and mental endurance will be tested. It's a platform for, for players uh, that uh, the women and the girls that have newly joined to look up to and uh, strive to, to participate in that competition. Rondu says this will help bolster the growth of women's football. But I travels to Lombasa this weekend. Uh, Suva travels to Nandrona this weekend. So how the coaches prepare the teams uh, psychologically to be able to travel and also go and play at the same time, on the same day, it's going to be a challenge. Fiji Football Chief Executive Mohamed Yusuf says the national players who will be representing their districts have been undergoing intense training sessions to prepare them. Uh, these girls will be exposed to large crowds at the venues which will be an exciting moment for the girls to showcase their talent. The first match will be played between Lambasa and Ba at 11.30 a.m. at Subrail Park in Lambasa. On Sunday, Telebunay Tassiri women will face Rewa at 1 p.m. at the NZ Stadium in Suva. Also on Sunday, Nandronga women will host Suva at Lawanga Park in Singatoka. Venina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. The Fijiana 15s may have to wait a little longer before they make their Rugby World Cup debut. 
World Rugby has this morning decided to recommend the postponement of this year's World Cup to next year. However, here at home, the extended squad continues with preparations. Aquila Dama reports. It's business as usual for the Fijiana, and now they have three training sessions a day. Because we wake up early in the morning and we did our run. Uh, uh, then we come and hit the gym this uh, It's a bit tough because uh, we have uh, three sessions a day. Uh, um, one thing that we need to work on now is just uh, getting used to these three sessions. Head coach Seni Rusi Seruvakula says there's a lot of changes in the players' basic skills. So the first one is 6 a.m., so we, they wake up at 5 uh, a.m., and the second one is 10, and the, the third one is uh, 3 p.m. So it's a solid uh, three session, and, uh, and by come in the afternoon, they're tired and they're ready to s sleep after dinner. The Fijiana will know next week whether the World Cup will still go ahead. The World Cup board and the executive committee will make a decision either on Monday or Tuesday. Aquila Thama, FBC Sports. Securing a contract for an overseas club has always been the ultimate goal of former Naita Siri fullback Vuate Karawalevu. But after his contract with the ACT Brumbies fell through last year due to the pandemic, Karawalevu knew that he had to try something else. Now the 19-year-old is all smiles after securing a deal with NRL club Sydney Roosters. Caroline Itabi reports. When the opportunity came knocking on the Kandabu youngster's door to join the Roosters, he didn't think twice. The ACT Brahms contract was turned down. But after a few months, Sydney Roosters came along. I was really happy. But uh, when uh, God closes one door, it comes another. The 19-year-old hasn't played rugby league before, but learning from some of the best, including West Nengama, has been a blessing. Um, yes, it will be difficult changing from rugby union, having not played a single game uh, of league. But uh, having uh, the likes of our coach and former Fiji Bat captain, West Nengama, has been uh, a good learning experience for me. Karao Levu has set a platform for other upcoming young talents in both codes, rugby union and league. All our local players and those who are, who are wishing to join uh, uh, Karao, uh, who's taking the lead in uh, this pathway, the, the pathway that uh, we provide here in Fiji is you um, basically progress from primary school, secondary schools into clubland. Karao Levu will also be a part of the Kaiviti Silk Tail squad this year. The Silk Tails will play their first match on the 20th of this month. Karleni Tavi, FBC Sports. Fiji Volleyball may not be able to hold any of its sanctioned competitions this year due to financial constraints. Outgoing President Linganguki Suba confirms the Federation does not have any money to hold its annual national competitions. Tale Matairakula with the details. Sanctioned tournaments like the Vulava Easter Championship is in doubt for this season. To be upfront and honest, uh, funding of this event was our biggest obstacle. Uh, we couldn't get the right uh, amount of funding to be able to, uh, to implement those tournaments that we had planned. The Federation was not able to secure any sponsors for the meets. We've had the pandemic, we had the missile outbreak, we had the floods. So a lot of the uh, corporate donors that were supporting us had to realign or relook at their sponsorship eh, and their marketing funds. Affiliate association Suva Volleyball is determined to continue its weekly meet despite the uncertainty. Uh, we will not be affected uh, in regards to tournaments. We have a five-year strategic plan and uh, at the moment we are on track in terms of uh, organizing uh, our own sanctioned tournaments and that also includes um, uh, the de development of our players. Apart from the unavailability of funds, the Federation will have to start new as they will have to select an administrative committee. This as President Linga Mukisuva has stepped down. This means national competitions are now far-fetched as there is no proper committee to govern its plans. Tale Materkula, FBC Sports. World Boxing Foundation Asia Pacific Super Welterweight Champion Chese the Hitman Ravundi is once again laying down the challenge. Ravundi will fight uh, veteran Abe Chand on the 20th of this month in Nandi. Chand has waited patiently for a chance to challenge Ravundi and the champion is not backing down. Since I was a kid, I've been heard of this name, Frazan Ali and Abe Chand. 
And I'm very thankful to God that they're still fighting. And uh, I already fight for Zan, I knock him out. And now is Mr. Abichan. I just want to thank him for being calling me out since the last year fight in uh, Nanra. Now the play of the day and the Wolverhampton Wanderers may have gone down to Man City 4-1 in the EPL yesterday, but captain Connor Cody gave them some glimmer of hope early in the match with an equaliser just when they needed through a well-timed header off a free kick. That's it from Sports Tonight in Weird and Wonderful later on. Take a look at some amazing sustainable architecture by a man in California. This and more coming up. Hello here, Sawa. We love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Cloudy conditions with occasional showers were experienced over most of the country today. In the west, cloudy and warmer conditions prevailed. There were some showers in the afternoon. From Pacific Harbour to Suva, breezy with a few heavy showers late in the morning, it became cloudy in the afternoon. And in the north, cloudy with a couple of showers, mainly early in the day. At sea, north to northwest, 20 to 25 knot winds, winds easing to 15 to 20 knots later tonight. Rough seas, moderate northeasterly swells. Turning to the tides, the next high tide is at 9.55 p.m., followed by low tide at 4.04 tomorrow morning. Sunrise is at 6.06. For tomorrow, occasional showers over most places, isolated thunderstorms and heavy falls mostly in the afternoon or evening. The outlook for Friday, cloudy periods with some showers and isolated thunderstorms over most places. In Fiji and Pulse, we ask, what do you think of the fast food war in Fiji? So it's good because uh, you have a competition, low prices for and uh, different choices, varieties. But also there is a concern regarding NCD. Uh, I think it is uh, matching up with uh, what we are going through. Uh, it's because of the pandemic and uh, waste of the job. I think it's very good as it will create competition and benefit people a lot. I think it will create more job for people. In the world of the weird and the wonderful, a sustainable architect based in California in the United States transforms recycled material into livable art. Breathing new life into stones and garbage, his approach to architecture allows him to draw within the lines of the world, one design at a time. And recapping our main stories, dedicated warehouses to store police exhibits, police to have independent internal affairs units, and each road fatality costs around $140,000. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM. To our poll question, this week we are asking, will you take the COVID-19 vaccine when it is available in Fiji? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day, this stunning sunset was captured by Do Miller in Malau, Lambasa. You can send us news with the pictures and videos. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda. And I'm from Motoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.